Brother Tim very well expressed the theme of the subject that we're going to be covering today. How well do you listen? And I'm glad that I'm not the only one that has a problem listening to the wife. Sometimes my has to hold my two ears stretch like this and then speak directly to my face because she knows that I'm distracted with something else. I can hear but I'm not listening. And by the way, she, she experiences the same thing. She goes through the same thing. Sometimes I'm talking to her and uh, she's looking at me with a big smile and I know she's not listening. I'm speaking away, I ask a question and then she answers whatever she wants. Not really having anything to do with my question. I came across a very interesting story of an old man who was wondering if his wife had a hearing problem. So one evening he stood 10 feet behind her while she was waiting and sitting in her lounge chair. And he spoke to her and he said, honey, can you hear me? No response. So I moved five feet closer and said, honey, can you hear me? Still no response. And finally he moved right behind her and said, Honey, do you hear me? And she replied, For the third time, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> she didn't have the problem. He was him. Now, it's interesting how many times you find in Scripture these words, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. It is a constant in the scriptures. For example, you see Jesus using that all the time concerning John the Baptist, that he was one of the greatest prophets ever. In Matthew eleven fifteen, he says, He that had, he had ears to hear, let him hear. Again, in Matthew chapter 13, verse 9, dealing with the parable of the sower, he uses the same thing. He who had ears to hear, let him hear. And then with the parable of the tares, giving an explanation in Matthew chapter 13, 43. Again, he uses this term. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who had ears to hear, let him hear. And if you go to the book of Revelation, it's interesting how many times, just the first two chapters, sorry, the first, the second and third chapter, you see Jesus concluding each uh, chapter with he who has an ear, let him hear, what the Spirit has to the churches. And he, we find that in chapter 2, verse 7, in verse 11, verse 17, verse 29, in chapter 3, verse 6, verse 13, verse 22. And you wonder, why why, why use this term? What, what's, what's it trying to tell us when we hear, we see this written in the, script, in the Scriptures? What's the point of these sayings? Well, it's like saying, what is being said is very important, so you better pay attention and listen, because if you don't, there will be consequences. So, pay attention. I don't know about you, when my kids were growing up, um, many times I would stand right in front of them, uh, you know, and try to give them the, what they, they call the uh, charla psicologica, the psicologica, the uh, psychological speech that would probably last two hours, about 15 minutes into the speech that were that tuned off. And then I go to Maritza and I say, honey, how come, you know, I'm speaking to them, but they seem out, they're, they're not, it's the same, you, you spoke to them for two hours. You, uh, I, I tuned myself out from the kitchen about five minutes into the conversation. I realized that they not only had a problem of hearing, I had a problem of communicating. Here in Mark chapter 4, verse 23 to 25, we see the same thing, something similar. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, take heed what you hear. Pay attention. Make sure you listen carefully. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto the you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given, and he that hath not, from him shall be taken, even that which he had. Again and again and again you have this, listen carefully. Now, if, you, if I talked to you in a private conversation, you didn't listen to me, you probably wouldn't lose very much. But when it's God talking to us, it makes all the difference. When God's saying, pay attention to me, 
Listen well, because if you just hear and don't pay attention, don't put in, in, into practice what I'm telling you, there's going to be consequences. I was talking to a young man this afternoon, uh, hoping to lead to the Lord, but there was, his life was such a mess that I thought, how in the world did he get himself into this situation? I had to conclude, well, we need to have a, a further conversation. I need to process everything that he was telling me because he had messed his life so badly. And to put a solution in, it would be like, you know, say, give me a solution for this problem. Well, it would be like peeling a, a, an onion. You can't just take the, the outer layer and then say, okay, it's fixed. No, you have to take one layer after it because the, the problem is all the way into the core. So it's not an easy solution. And many times we get ourselves into deep trouble because we simply hear, but we don't pay attention to what God has to say. Or we just simply hear and dismiss it. Yeah, I understand, but not today. That kind of situation can bring us into deep trouble. God makes us responsible of what he tells us. And one day we will have to give account, not just how we use our talents, but also how we responded to his word. I'd like to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll get into the, 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 the three points that I had this afternoon. Hopefully we'll be able to, by the end of the message, we'll have a better idea of how we can be better listeners. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we see this pass these passages repeated again and again, mainly from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's quite shocking when you go to Revelation, you see Jesus speaking to the churches and again and again and again, seven, almost seven times, he ends up with, you better pay attention to what I'm saying. Or else. And Lord, we don't want to hear the, the or, or else because that it's always painful. And so Lord, this afternoon I pray that not only I, but all of us will be more attentive uh, to the Word, especially to the Word, Lord, when it's preached. Or when we just simply go to the Word to read it. Or when we have to share with somebody, Lord, with, that we be more attentive to what you have to say. When you speak, we need to listen. And we need to obey. As we saw in these songs this afternoon, Lord, there's only one correct response to uh, your Word, and that is obedience. I pray that you will help me this afternoon, Lord, bring these three points across. And hopefully by the end of this, we'll all be more responsible when we hear your word. And we will all be ready to obey. Because if we don't, again, we will see that not only your blessings will be withdrawn, we can, be, we can get ourselves into deep trouble. Father, help us this afternoon. In Jesus' name we pray. I don't know about you, but I, I find that, that as society gets more and more technical with their phones, their computers, and internet, and everything else, people seem to have more information available to them than ever, but simply don't, don't listen. Uh, you, uh, especially young people, when they, when they come across 17, 18 years old, who are always stuck on the screen on their telephone, you talk to them and go, huh? Yeah, for the third time I told you, you know, uh, and they're saying, well, uh, they're not processing what you're saying. They, they, they're just going through the, all these images in their phone, and somehow they, they, it's very hard to communicate with them. I find when I go to restaurants uh, with my wife, and I see a couple who was supposed to be um, freshly married, and they're both stuck to their, to their screens. And I'm thinking, wow, that's a wonderful relationship. More information than ever, but we listen less than ever in history. I have three things that I'd like to um, help us with, uh, three types of listeners. And I, as I bring these three across, I want you to ask yourself, where do I fall? Where am I right now? And of course, you might want to just pat yourself in the back and, and, and think, well, I'm not doing very bad, but think of the, how fruitful you are now compared to maybe five years ago. Because if we are good listeners, we'll see that there will be fruit. Three types of listeners. The first one we will be looking at is the dull of hearing. 
And we see that one in, in Hebrews chapter 5, talking to Christians, saying, you know, you, it's difficult for me to communicate to you, not because of the subject matter, but because of your inability to listen. You're not listening. Then we'll be seeing uh, those who have itching ears. And in our society today, we have those who might want to go to church and they don't like what they hear, even if it's 100% biblical. They go to another place to find something that will please them. They have itching ears. They want to hear only what they want to hear. Yesterday, as we were looking at the movie, uh, somebody said the reason why you can't believe is not because you can't, it's because you don't want to. That was a pretty amazing statement there. And a lot of people today, you know, they might have a clear gospel presented to them, and it's not that they don't understand it, it's that, that they don't want to submit to it. And we have this kind of behavior in a society today. And then we'll be looking at those who are here with a noble and good heart. I, I think we'd all like to fit into that, this category. But you will notice that those who fit into this category really search into the scriptures to see if this is true, only to put in practice what God tells us to do. So the three kinds of listening. And then we will be looking at the second point, the importance of good listening. Now there's five very essential things that come, uh, I'm sorry, that five essential things that we need in order to be um, I'm here and again thinking in Spanish. Five things that come if you're a good listener. The importance of good listening is essential to being blessed. How many of you here this afternoon say, well, I came this afternoon to be blessed. I really want to be blessed by the Lord. You know, being a good listener will allow you to be blessed by the Lord. Then it is essential for those who do not know the Lord and they need saving faith. We had five people last night in the movie, and I came across one of the men and spoke to him. And although I thought the message in the movie was very clear, when I came to ask him, if you were to die today, where would you go? He says, well, I hope I go to heaven. And so what are you depending on? Well, I'm about to do this and this and this and this and this, and I think God will have any consideration. I thought, where were you during the one hour and almost two hour movie or film? A lot of people hear the message, but somehow they, there's something that, in, uh, that keeps them from wanting what is being said. So it is important to good listening, and if you're here this afternoon and you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, listening to this message will probably help you to be more open to the gospel. Then it's also essential for preventing apostasy. We've been talking a lot about that on Wednesdays, and Brother Tim so I spoke about that last Sunday. And then it is essential to avoiding rejection and condemnation from God. And now you say, okay, don't leave it there. Help us become better listeners. Well, I have five suggestions. If you want to be a better listener, make listening, listening an act of worship. Not just singing, listening. I mean, when you say, well, you know, here, here's the preaching. I can just sit there and do nothing. No, make your listening have you ever heard that before? Make your listening an act of worship. Then listen from the first to the last. You know, some of us would probably get into a conversation and uh, somebody speaking, we're not listening to everything they're saying and we're already preparing our argument. We're not listening. A lot of fights take place because of that, because we don't listen. We only listen to the first part, we, we don't let them finish the sentence. So. I think being a good listener, the event that we listen completely from the first to the last, and also uh, if you're going to be listening to a message, bring your Bible with you. Take notes. You say, well, Pastor, I don't take notes. Well, you know, I found that taking notes helps me register the information. It, it disciplines my mind to, to be uh, tuned to what is being preached. It, you know, so read along in your Bible. Listen, and then when you when you listen to the message, listen with faith. Don't just say, okay, that's good, I understood. No, it's like, what am I going to do with that now that I understand? So listen with faith, and then listen with a mind to act. Make sure that when you understand something in the Scriptures, you say, okay, Lord, here I am, I'm ready. Okay, so let's, let's look at the first one. Three types of listeners. Now again, you want, I want you to examine yourself. 
If you fall in the, in the first two categories, you're in trouble. Okay? You will, have a, 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 you, you will have problems in your spiritual growth. You'll be going to church year after year after year after year. You'll be reading your Bible maybe uh, even every day without ever experiencing some kind of growth. I want you to see the first kind of listener is the dull of hearing. Let's turn real fast to Hebrews chapter 5 verse 11. I think there's a very interesting lesson here that we, that we can learn from. Chapter 5, verse 11. <clears throat> Here's, um, I believe it was the Apostle Paul who wrote uh, this, this book. It could be somebody else, someone else, but one thing we do know for sure is it was an inspired book. And the one who's writing says this, of whom we have many things to say and, her, and, uh, and hard to be uttered. Seeing you are full, you're sorry, dull of hearing. I have many things to say, to say, but very hard to explain. Not because of the subject matter being dealt with, not because it was a difficult thing to to understand, but because of their attitude towards uh, what was being said. And so, if we are dull of hearing. You and I, if we are dull of hearing, we will experience lack of spiritual growth. Brother Tim, you, you give a wonderful two and a half, almost three hour lessons at once a, a month on Christian growth seminar. What was, what's the intention of that, those classes? Can you tell me? We've been doing it for a year and, and, and I don't get it. What, what, what's the purpose for, for, for going through those uh, almost two and a half hours of good, solid doctrinal teaching. Then we grow. But then again, sometimes we go there and say, oh, 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 I wish you would finish right now. Maybe you have a cup of coffee and rest my mind because so much to take it. If we wrote down that most of the things that were being said, you know, they go home and study them, we will experience greater growth if we just sit there and kind of just, uh huh, uh huh, you know, and just go through the motions. Notice here it says, hard to be uttered, which means hard to be, to explain. Why? Because you are dull hearing. You, you, you simply, you're not really listening. You're not attentive. Listen to me. I know that every time I come to church with a ready heart and a ready mind, and, and that takes some time during the week, and especially before I come to church, when I come this way, I'm always blessed. I'm always blessed. I remember years ago when, well, that seems so long ago. We were still in Madrid, and my pastor said, Sammy, they're going to have a worldwide missions conference in Washington, D.C. People from all over the United States, probably from different parts of the world, are going to the Constitution Hall. This place could gather 5,000 people with no problem, with no trouble. And they're going to, they're going to, they're going to have the, probably the best preachers in the nation. Oh, I wanted to go. And, but I didn't have the money, and I wanted my wife to go with me, too. And so... <laughs> I worked uh, very hard that month to be, and you know, I prayed, Lord, will you please provide me with the money? And of course, I needed the money straight away because the conference was just a couple of months uh, uh, ahead of us. And so I prayed, and the Lord gave me a contract to paint a mural in a school of Christopher Columbus. It was the uh, Denario, uh, 500 years of the discovery of America. And so they, they commissioned me to paint a mural, and I did that in two weeks, and I was paid. Good hands of money, enough to be able to go to this conference. And the excitement was building up in me, you know, I can't, I, it's happening, it's happening. And then we flew and we had to, uh, we, we, we arrived at Chattanooga, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Then somebody was going uh, to lend us a car to drive all the way up to, up, up through Virginia and up, you know, all the way to this place where we're going to have the conference. The momentum was building up so much that when we, so the night came to go to Constitution Hall, what well, we had to drive through a very dark part of town in Washington. And uh, of course, how do you do it? How do you, how do you get to this place without knowing the area? And I said, maybe we could skip the night. Maybe we could just stay home tonight and then go with somebody that knows how to get there. You say, you kidding? After all the work that we, that, you know, that we've done to get here, we're going to, 
we're not going to miss it. No matter what happens, we're going to go there. And we drove it. You know, it was only by God's grace that we arrived at Constitution Hall, getting there in time and listen to the message. There was over 3,000 people there. I was so blessed. I was like, like you know, uh, uh, floating the uh, two feet above, above the, my seat. And the message was so heart wrenching. And I thought, well, I was, you know, the music and the environment, and, the, and it was like, you know, I could do this every day, three times a day. And then I realized that it wasn't really what was going on there, it was how my heart was prepared for that evening. Four days of conference. Every day was a revival experience. And I went home and I said, Lord, help me go to church every day with that same attitude. Because, you know, it's, yeah, you know, you can have a bad, a bad preacher once in a while. But, you know, we can also have bad listeners every once in a while. With these individuals, the problem that they had was not with the preacher. It was not with the subject material. Not even with the presenter, but with the listener. And we have a similar situation in Matthew 13. Isaiah wrote, of such people and Jesus applied it to many in his day. In Matthew 13, 13 through 15 says, Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see, see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive, for his people's heart a waxed gross. Gross, I think that's funny. Gross, gross. And their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest any time they shall see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and shall understand with their hearts, and shall be converted, and I shall heal them. God was ready to bless them, bringing spiritual healing, but it couldn't because these people had wax in their ears, spiritual ears. So people are this way because they have dull hearts. And this prevents them from understanding God's truth, from turning from sin to God and being healed or even saved. Sometimes I, I think, you know, that message was so clear. We have maybe several unbelievers in the congregation. It was so clear. Surely they will respond to it and say, Pastor, I need to get saved. And it's like, oh, goodbye, I will see you next week. It's like, what's going on? You, 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 you kind of, I struggle with that. Uh, such a clear message. And such lack of response. <clears throat> and you know, and, and people sometimes only listen when what's being said is pleasing. They have what I call selective, selective hearing. So like, for example, if you're, if you're preaching sound doctrine, it's just, it's just simply too off. This is what we find in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word, be instant in season. Okay, next next Sunday, I'm going to make bring a, a, a message to reprove the church. Who's coming? Oh, the next one, I'm going to bring a message to rebuke the church. Who's coming? Or to exert, or, you know, it's going to be a difficult one tonight. Put your seatbelt because we're going through difficult terrain. Who's coming? Well, Paul tells Peter, be ready for that. Because that's what's going to bring growth in your life. That's going to bring where it's going to bring correction in your life. But it seems like today, all people only listen, only go to church because it kind of feels right. Because I like it. If I don't like it, well, then I'll just change them. Go to another church where they will uh, preach something that I do like. So we have those who have dull hearing, and then you have those who have itching ears, and then you have those Wonderful people have noble and good hearts. And if you turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 8, verse 15, you find that the, the group called the Bereans were the, these kind of listeners. In Luke 8, 15, it says, But that on the good ground are they 
in which an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. And if you, you, you that's in Luke chapter 8, but notice how in Acts chapter 17 verse 11, the Bereans were listening with that kind of heart, with an open heart. Lord, here I am. Have you ever seen little chicks when mama uh, bird comes in with a, with a, a, a gut full of worms and you know they, they just sense a vibration in the nest and they open up their mouths this big their the mouth is bigger than themselves and they're like wow you know I want to get as much of it because if I don't my little brother over here is going to take the well you know what I what I want. We should be ready like that. You know when the word's being presented if we know it's God's word we should be ready to open our mouths and say Lord bring it all in I want it to go deep into my heart. Look what in Acts chapter 17 11 says these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, talking about the Bereans, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. You know, when I went to Washington, you see, I, was, I went there with all readiness of mind. And search the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. They were, if you have the New King James Bible, you'll, you'll find the word fair-minded. That's wanting to give Paul a fair hearing. We're ready to listen to you. And he showed me how they receive with all readiness of mind. Now this is the kind of listener that we need to become. And if we become this kind of listener, I'm telling you, you will never leave the church feeling like you haven't been touched by the Lord. So why is it so important to be this kind of listener. Now we go to the second point, the importance of being good listeners. Five good reasons. Are you taking note? How many of you are listening so far? Okay, good. It's essential, essential to being blessed. Now we come to church, hopefully, I come with two uh, motives. One, to be a blessing. And then, of course, I want to leave with a blessing. And you know, um, It all depends on how good I am listening. For those willing to listen properly, there are wonderful things to learn. Matthew chapter 13, in verse 16 and 17, it says, Blessed are ye, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. Now, what, you say, what does that mean? It means that, for example, in the Old Testament, if David was alive, if Daniel was alive during this time, they would have been there like those chicks with their mouths completely open, with their ears completely open, saying, we'd be wanting those things, but we never had them. Now, you have them, and you don't seem to appreciate them. And Jesus is telling them, listen, they decide to, have, to listen to these things, and they never had the chance. And we have them. Sometimes, you know, I think we're just spoiled. In those days, people didn't have a Bible. If there was one Bible in the church, they were fortunate. Today, we have 10 Bibles in our shelf. And how many of us really study them as we should? We have more resources than ever. <coughs> but we tend, we tend to be complacent. In Ephesians 1, 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So we miss out on the blessings simply because we don't listen properly. Something else, another, um, important, uh, another important thing about it, listening well, it is essential for saving faith. In Romans, if you turn your Bibles with me, in Romans chapter 1, <clears throat> Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, Read along with me. Notice what Paul says about the gospel. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. No, so, well, you know, we can certainly gain faith by reading the Word. 
It is mostly by listening to the word priest. You know, the go back 43 years ago when I when I first got saved, 4th of November of this year will be 44 years. Seemed like yesterday. 44 years. I can't remember what happened this morning, but I can remember what happened 34 years ago. <laughs> By the way, when you turn, when you go over 50, this is going to be your your trend. But you know, I can remember the, those times when um, Steve Pico, Johnny Carrillo, Johnny Thames, co-workers that would come and share the gospel to me again and again. I was very stubborn. I'm still very stubborn. But I was more stubborn then, in the, in the wrong way. And, uh, you know, for a while, it was just rejection. It was just fighting back. And then, little by little, what they were saying started registering in my heart. And it was making more sense. There was one day, a few, a couple of months before I got saved, that me, an atheist, was praying and said to God, God, if you do exist, Please, show yourself true in my life. Please speak to me. He had been speaking to me all that time through these men. But now I wanted, I wanted, I was listening. I was more ready to listen. You know, from that time on, the Lord started impacting my heart, my soul in such a way that I wasn't able to sleep at night after, a, a, you know, the message that these guys were giving me, the gospel of Jesus Christ. It was just grinding my mind, thinking, you know, you were able to fight God who is righteous and ready to punish, never understanding that he's always love and ready to forgive. But now you understand the second part of the God, the second part of this message, that God is gracious and is ready to save you. And I was still fighting back. And I said, Lord, just like in the movie last night, when uh, Lee Strobe, I think his name is, he said, God, after all the arguments, after all the research, he ended up with no bullets in his gun, no more shots to shoot. And he said, God, you win. You know, when you come before the Lord and you say, Lord, I give, it, I give up, I surrender, you win. That's when probably we will start hearing with the right condition, with the right ears. And, you know, for me, opening myself up to the Lord allowed the Holy Spirit to convict me and bring me to salvation. The second, the 4th of November, 1980, at around 1 o'clock in the afternoon, I know because it was lunchtime, I came to the Lord just like Strobel in the movie. I went down on my knees and prayed and said, Lord, I'm lost. I'm lost. Boy, those words were hard to utter. But I had to surrender to the truth. I am lost in my sins. That was pretty threatening. I was hearing myself say this, and I was shocked by my own words. I am lost and need to be found. And then I breathed in heavy, and I said, Lord, and I know that you are the solution. Would you please come into my life and save me? I need you in my life. I surrender all to you. That heaviness of heart, that weight that was, I was carrying for such a long time, and, uh, fell from my shoulders, and there was tremendous joy in my heart. This first love that we call. Uh, you know, it was tremendous. What an experience. And only when I surrendered to him, then the same phase that I started working. But let me give you one more. It's essential to preventing apostasy. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, it says, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest, brother, uh, 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 Tim, I think, read this, earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by the angel was steadfast, and every transgression and the disobedience Receive a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which is 
which at the first began to be spoken by the word and was confirmed unto us by them that heard it. You know, you know, if you listen, if you're a good listener, it can it can prevent you from falling away, from preventing uh, apostasy. And also, it is essential for avoiding rejection and condemnation. Here in Matthew chapter 10, verse 14 and 15, it says, And whosoever shall, uh, shall I not receive, and whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, uh, or city Shake off the dust of your feet, very I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the, for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for the day from, uh, from that city. I don't know if you believe in, the dead, in, in deadlines. I mean, I think we, we all have like a window where, where we can respond to and get saved. But I think, you know, we can be so hardened where the Lord says, okay, no more. And here, it seems to be suggesting that, you know, we can be preaching the word and people can be rejecting it on and on and on and on to the point that God says, okay, shake your feet, get the dust and move on. There's other people that need this message. Some time ago, I came across a brother who said, Pastor, all the people that I go to seem to, be, seem to have hardened hearts. They don't want to listen. And, I, and I, you know, I'm praying that the Lord would use me and and use the message, the gospel message, to bring them to, to repentance and to salvation. But they don't seem to want. And I go again and again. I go back to them again. I said, what do I do? I said, go for somebody else. There's plenty of people out there. And so, you know, you might have people around you who, you know, you give them these pearls of wisdom from Scripture. And they reject them. And uh, so what do we do? There's a time that we can, we, can, we can say, you know, that's it, no more. So the rejection and condemnation will come from, from God. So you say, okay, so I, mean, I think I got the point. How do I improve, uh, how do we improve our ability to listen? I've got six steps that will help you become a better listener. Now, again, you can listen to this, you can hear it and do nothing about it, or you can write it down and say, okay, I'm, I'm going to do something about it. One, make listening an act of worship. This hour, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, one hour, make it a, a time when you say, Lord, you have my undivided attention. I know people turn off 15 minutes after the message begins. You know, of course, I've been saved for 40, 40, 40 years, it's going to be very soon. I've, been, I've, I've, I've trained my ear to listen, but I notice that I can fall asleep like everybody else. So what do I do? I put that little stand in front of me to take my notes. I put it's almost like uh, preparing my office there, and I start taking notes of everything, everything that boom sparks it, something in my mind. I write it down, and then I go home and go through those things. Some of those things I've studied before, but I find that I need to strengthen my knowledge of those things. So I write them down, check them later. And if I do this work. I'm making, I'm doing myself a favor. I don't know how long it takes Brother Tim to prepare one of his sermons, but did you know that sometimes it takes us from 10 to 20 hours to prepare a sermon? 10 to 20 hours. Imagine, husbands, imagine your wife spending five hours cooking the best dish, the one that you love so much, maybe a three course meal with wonderful dessert and you know, all the toppings and everything there, and then you, he call, she calls you to the table and you say, oh, I'm not hungry today, thank you honey, and just walk off. How would you feel? Well, next time you're just going to get a piece of bread and that's it, you know. He doesn't appreciate it. You know, I don't know how you would feel, or well, maybe your husband can have the same, or, you know, try to have the same kind of uh, approach to their, their wife, and the wife says, no, thank you. I know one thing that Marisa will never appreciate, it's a bouquet of roses. She's allergic to them. Now, if they're paper made, no, see, she might put it somewhere. I'm only kidding. Not about the allergies, she's allergic to flowers and plants and everything else. The only thing she's not allergic to is to me, praise <laughs> the Lord. So what am I trying to say here? An attitude of worship. You say, Lord, you're speaking, 
The Bible is being preached. It's being uh, opened up to me. I'm listening. I'm paying attention. You have my undivided attention. Lord, I worship you with my ears. Amen. I have big ears, so I worship very good. <laughs> then listen from first to last. Pay attention to it all the way through. For men, that is very, very difficult. <laughs> right, ladies? We pay attention to the first three minutes and then we just kind of they just go off. I know that it bothers my wife when she has something important to say. If I listen to her, and of course she knows when I'm listening, if I kind of turn around, you know, go around like this, she knows she's, I'm not listening. And that's when she grabs my ears. I used to do this with my kids. I'm speaking to them and they're wondering, you know, I know they're in the third planet out there, so I'm saying, I go close to them and, you know, grab the, I do the same thing my wife would do, and just kind of grab their ears and pull them out, so, you know, the ear holes are nice and open, and they say, are you, are you here now? Uh, 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 yeah, Dad. You know, I'm not going to do that with congregation, although sometimes I feel like doing it. <laughs> Listen from, you know, if you get the message, if you, you got the first point, are you getting the third one? I could, I could be cruel to you and bring ten points. <laughs> but, you know, try to listen. Try to grab what is being said and then try to respond to what's being said. I, you know, with, with, with people today, it's, if, you, if you carry a conversation with some people today and you, if you, and you, want, you, know, you want to have a conversation for more than ten minutes, five minutes after you need speaking, uh, you know, in the elevator, for example, you, if you say, how are you doing? You just respond, how's the weather? It's hot today. And if you go on beyond that, they shut off. They're, they're not there anymore. And so, you know, and sometimes when we have something important to say, they only listen to the first sentence, but they don't listen to the end. They don't get the full idea. And this is bad communication. So listen. Uh, and listen to, to all the parts and to try to fully understand. Then look at the speaker. Do you understand what if I said listen with your eyes? You know, I have a problem with, during COVID, this was a real big problem for me because I had to speak to a computer screen for 45 minutes. And all I'd see was, uh, you know, 10, 15 circles on the screen. And I'm supposed to be excited bringing the message. Yeah, I think, well, you know, I, I go back when I finish. I say, Lord, please end COVID, not because of COVID, but because I'm, I'm going to commit suicide. This is just very, very difficult. I need eye contact. I don't know about how it is in Ireland or England or Wales, but here you, you speak to people looking at their face. Their, their eyes express, uh, they, they communicate. I can, I can tell what's going on in the mind just by looking at their eyes. Did you ever hear that the eyes are the mirror of the soul? I have a hard time speaking to, speaking to people who are like, oh yeah, well, yeah, 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 and I'm right here. Hey, excuse me, I'm, I'm right here. Talk to me. I'm, I'm right here. That, maybe it's just me. But I need, I need a face to speak to. And so when you're, when you're trying to communicate, also communicate with your eyes. Look at them. Look at the facial expressions. Not just listen to what they say, but what is their intention. And then when it comes to preaching, when you come, it comes to listen to a message, read along your Bible. Again, maybe it's just me. Maybe call me old-fashioned if you want to. But there's something about having a Bible in your hand, you know, and, and checking it out, and then, line, you know, it's becoming this Bible is becoming. I just got this Bible about, about a month ago. When I got it first time, it was a foreign Bible. I couldn't do without my old Bible, which was all broken up and you know, was, uh, marked. And it, it, I knew where I was going with that Bible. It was, it was me. But I was in that Bible. I had road mapped the whole thing. Now I get a new Bible, I'm lost. But when, you know, now that I'm 
working my way through, you will see me mark more and more the, the passages, and there's something about that becomes personal to you. This is this area here I've already tread. This is, I, I know this territory. There's something here that is now me. It, it, you know, so when when I see telephones, you know, again, I'm not preaching against using your telephone or, or your uh, iPad or whatever, but you know, I, I find it difficult. Huh? And witnessing to somebody from a telephone? All the things that come out of the telephone, only one thing comes out of the Bible. You, you, you see what I mean? I'm not trying to be uh, uh, mean about this, but try to make the, the Bible something you know personal to you. Read along when the preachers says, let's look into this passage, read through it. And if you have a question at the end, say, Pastor, I didn't understand that. Can you please explain this? There's something about that connection, that interaction that helps you grow. And then listen with faith. Listen with a willingness to accept and believe what is shown in the Word of God. If you turn to Hebrews chapter 4, verse, verse, verse 1 and 2, you see that those who died in the wilderness, they died because they didn't listen. They didn't listen with faith. In Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, it picks up that idea. It says, Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left a, a promise being left us of entering into the rest, any of you shall seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, notice now, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Now this helps me, because every time I preach, I, I, I'm expecting response. But if I don't get responses, you know, it's not always my fault. That, you know, sometimes you say, well, that didn't go very well. I mean, everybody fell asleep. You know, it could be that you were a very boring preacher. It could be that. But it's not always the fault of the preacher. Maybe the first people in the, in the, in the congregation were in one of those chiquitos until 3 o'clock in the morning, and they got up this morning, go to church, and they're all heavy-eyed, you know, heavy, they, 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 they're really not here. So, let's look at, but the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So if we don't listen with faith, the same short sort of thing will happen to us. And last, listen with a mind to act. Sometimes we're like the people in Ezekiel's day, in Ezekiel 33, <clears throat> verses 30 to 32, it says, Also the Son of Man, the children of thy people, still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit, notice it's very, very interesting. And they sit before thee as my people. Now that's good. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouths they show much love. Oh, this is wonderful. What a great message. Ezekiel, you did really good today. Good chap. <laughs> they, the mouth they show love, but their hearts goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song. And that's part. It's like you know, uh, it's music to my ears. Oh, I love hearing those messages. I, I had a. Another one of those experiences that marked me year, many years ago, back in Alcalá de Henares, back in Madrid. I was just a few years in the Lord, and I thought, you know, when am I going to be 25 spiritually? When am, and, a, and, a, and a lady came to church who had, so she said, she had, she had been saved for 30 years. And I thought, whoa, 30 years saved. This lady must be a mind of wisdom, a mind, you know, filled with Biblical wisdom. And I just wanted to dig into her mind and see the things, you know, have her share with me the things that she had learned. 
And after about five minutes of the conversation, I realized that she, after 30 years, she was still a babe in the Lord. Hardly any understanding of the things of the Word. But she very convincingly, convincingly said, I'll be saved for 30 years. But still a babe. And here, you know, we come to, sometimes we can come to church and say, well, I love to go to church because when I can't sleep at night, the pastor puts me back to sleep. <laughs> or I love the way such and such a preacher preaches. It's just, oh, it just warms my heart. It's a wonderful experience. It's like music. Very lovely song of one that had a pleasant voice and can play well on the instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. They love to hear them, but for the wrong reasons. Now, when we come to the church, how do we respond? We have some very important uh, clues here of how we can become better listeners. And you say, well, okay, now I got it. Uh, can we finish uh, sing a song and go home? Now we can do that. But the reason why I'm bringing this to you is because I've found the benefit of you know, putting this into practice. And it's helped me grow. And every time I, I, I come tuned to this way of listening, I'm always blessed. And by being blessed, I'm always able to bless others. This encouragement, this hope in my heart. I've understood, I've heard God's voice. Now I can move along and try to spread that to other people. Try to bring a smile to their face. Do you see how the world is going? It's going to fall apart. Yeah, but we win at the end. <laughs> Show them that there's hope. It is important to know being good listeners. And if we don't, learn to listen well. Not only will we have problems with our relationships, but we will have problems with the greatest work that we have to have a relationship with, which is God Himself. When He speaks, don't be heavy of heart, don't be heavy, and don't be dull of hearing, but be open, ready to put into action, put your mind to say, okay, I got it, it's registered, it's happening. I'm starting to know, I don't know what's going to happen in 10 years, but I know what I need to do now. And I think I know, I know what to do tomorrow. I know how to advance. I'm ready now to take in what the Lord is telling me through the message, through my reading, through, through the testimonies that others give me. I'm, I'm listening, Lord. Please speak. God loves when we listen. But did you know that God, if we don't listen to Him, He can do the same with us. He can turn His ear and say, sorry, uh, no, with my kids again, you know, when I was tired of their excuses, then they came, Paul, can I have an ice cream? I said, speak to my hand, please. You can speak all day long to my hand, it's not going to listen to you. <laughs> they hated when I did this and put my hand in front of their face. I didn't do it often, but when I did it, he's not listening, he's rejecting me. So yeah, because I've been talking to you all day, you haven't listened to anything that I said. Why should I be listening to you? Notice in Isaiah 59, and I'll finish with this. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. It's not because he can't hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid His face from you, that He will not hear. Whoa, that's a powerful verse. And there's more, but time is gone, so I'll try to close with, uh, with this. Remember when the, uh, Jesus, in the Transfiguration, Jesus kind of opens up, his flesh, we know how it went, but all of a sudden you can see this glow, the Shekinah glory that was always in Jesus Christ. Now the disciples can see it. 
And uh, of course, the disciples, not understanding very much, they said, we want, to th we want to build three altars here, one or two to the prophets and one for, for Jesus Christ. And God himself said, this is my beloved son, hear him, Luke chapter 9, verse 35. So folks, friends, how well do you listen? Uh, maybe you're the kind of listener that we saw in the, in the beginning, the dull of hearing. Maybe you only hear for uh, things that you like. The, you know, you, you come ready to listen to, like with itching ears, only those things that are pleasing, pleasing to you. Or maybe you like the Bereans who come with an open heart, with a noble and good heart. I think it's essential that we become good listeners. If you want to be blessed, it depends on being a good listener. If you're not saved, if you want to be saved, you need to listen carefully to the plan of salvation. If you say, well, I've been saved for so many years, but I don't see any fruit in my life, well, maybe we need to start by listening more carefully because hearing carefully bringeth fruit. You might say, well, I'm kind of drifting away, I'm getting cold. Well, you know, listening well will prevent you from apostasy. And uh, this is also essential for avoiding rejection and condemnation. And again, we saw five steps to be becoming better listeners. Make it an act of worship. It's not just Brother Tim up here preaching. It's not just Brother Clay preaching. It's not just Brother Sam preaching, whoever is up here preaching. If they're preaching from the Word of God, make sure you say, Lord, I don't see anybody but you speaking. Make it an act of worship. Listen from first to last. Read along in your Bible. Bring your Bible. Make your Bible a personal thing. You know, I started off with the Bible that was given to me when I was saved in Home Baptist Church. It was dedicated to me by the pastor. The first Bible I ever had. That lasted me 10 years. After 10 years, it was falling apart. That's a good sign. Because it means it's being used. So I got me a really good, you know, leather case Bible. Wonderful Bible. It cost me a lot of money, but I said, you know, it's about time I grow up and get, a, you know, something that's good. A good, a good uh, uh, gun. I mean, something that, uh, that's quality. And so I got that one. I thought it would last me forever. But by that time, I was practically devouring Scripture. It only lasted me five years. Then I got another Bible. It only lasted me three years. And it seems like from then on, every three to four years, I need to get a new Bible. Then you say, well, Sammy, take care of your Bible. It'll last you forever. I admire those who have a Bible that have, you know, they're it's 40 years old and they still look like the first day. <coughs> I can't do that. I can't. I just, you know, for me, this is like a knife, you know. Back in Australia when I grew up, my, my dad gave me a pocket knife. And I used it for everything. Skin rabbits, you know, uh, you know uh, sharpened uh, uh, lances or whatever. The thing was part of me. After a few years of using my pocket knife, it was my pocket knife. And I wanted to pass this on to my, my boy, Gabriel. By the time I passed it on to him, there was no pocket knife left. <laughs> but, you know, for me, it was still something very, very personal. Something that I grew through. Something that was part of me. And this, not a pocket knife, but the sword of the, sword of the Lord must become that in us. Or for us. So listen with faith and listen with a mind to act. Let's have a word of prayer. Let's all stand and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we tend to ask ourselves, why do you repeat these words? Those who have an ear to hear, hear what the God has to say. Not exactly in that way, but you repeat this again and again and again and again and again and seven times in, in the book of Revelation. I think it's because we, you know that we are, we tend to drift away. Our attention just simply becomes null. Help us remember that when we open the Bible, we're opening the Word of God. Help us, so when we come to church, we worship. 
But when we come to study the Bible, we come understanding <clears throat> that the Word of God is going to be open to us and that we will have a responsibility to respond to it. It will be in obedience. And if we don't, <clears throat> there will be consequences, negative consequences, lack of spiritual growth, maybe drifting away. Uh, Lord, simply become useless. But boy, when we are attentive, when we learn, when we open our mouths wide and our hearts wide and we let the Word come in and it burns in our heart, becomes part of us. Lord, what a difference it makes in our life, in our character, in our fruit bearing. And so tonight, Lord, I pray that you will help me be, become a better listener and help each one of us, Lord, become better listeners. Help us take heed, Lord, to the things that we that are presented this afternoon. They're good. It's good advice. It'll help us become better Christians. It'll help us to be blessed by the Almighty more easily. Be with each one of us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.